So in this example, we're asked to find the Fourier series of a triangular wave. The function is defined in this section here. Now, although we're not asked to sketch the function, it's always a good idea to do so because that may reveal something about the symmetry of the function. And as we've seen in the lectures, if we know that the function has a well-defined symmetry, that can make the calculation of the Fourier series a lot more straightforward. So let's quickly sketch what the function looks like. We can draw our axes like that. We only need to draw it for one period. So we'll draw it between, we're going to have plus t over 2, t over t there, and then minus t over 2, and minus t there. If we look at the definition of the function, what we can see is it's a linear function that goes up like that. And then in this region here, it's also a linear function, but there's a negative there. And then if we extend the function over the full period, we get a function that looks like that. So what we can see is that this is a function with even symmetry. And what we know now from the lectures is that if we have a function with even symmetry, that bn has to be equal to zero for all values of n. So there are no sign components in the Fourier series of this function. So all we have to do is calculate the values of a0 and also the an components as well. So at this point now we can look at the definition of the Fourier series. So here taken from the lecture notes is the definition of the Fourier series for a function that has periodicity equal to big T. So what we can see is that a0 is equal to, it's 2 divided by t, and then it's the integral over one period, and then it's the function we're trying to find the Fourier series of, integrated with respect to dt. Now in this case we have an even function, so we can make use of the fact that the integral between in this case, if we went from 0 to t, we would have to, if we look at the function up here, we have a different, different definition between 0 and t over 2 as we do between t over 2 and t. Because it's an even function, what we can do is we can say that this is equal to, in this case, the integral over 4 times 4 divided by t. We put an extra factor of 2 in, and then it's the integral between 0 and t over 2, and then f of t dt like that. So all we need to do now is put in the definition of f of t. We can write a0 is equal to 4 over t and then it's the integral between 0 and t over 2. f of t over the range 0 to t over 2 just has a value equal to t and then it's the integral dt like that. So we've just got a linear function to integrate. That integrates up to t squared over 2 and then the limits are 0 and t over 2. So that gives me 4 divided by t. Then there's a factor of a half from inside the brackets. So then t squared evaluated at t over 2. That gives me t squared over 4. And we can see that there's a cancellation of the 4. And that gives me a t. There's also a cancellation of a t. That gives me t over 2. So this is the value of a0 in this case. So that's the value of a0. We now need to calculate the value of a n. And again, we can make use of the fact that it's an even function. We can say that a n, instead of integrating between 0 and t, we can integrate between 0 and t over 2 and put an additional factor of 2 in. So we can write this as 4 over t, the integral between 0 and t over 2. It's f of t, which is t. And now we've got cos. 2n pi t over big T like that. So this is the integral that we need to evaluate to find the value of a n. Now, unlike example 1 where we had a fairly straightforward integral, we can see that this is a more difficult integral. We've got essentially two parts. We've got a t 
and then we've got its cosine part there. So we're going to have to integrate by parts. As always, we'll say that the t bit is the thing we'll call our function u, and the cosine will be our dv by dt, like that. Remember, if we do it this way, then when we integrate by parts, we'll be get, able to get rid of the, um, the function t there. So we write this as 4 over t, and then brackets, and then we have to work out it's the first term is u, so that's t, and then it's v. So we have to integrate the cosine term. That integrates up to a sine term, but we bring out a factor of big T over 2n pi. So we get t, big T, 2n pi, and the denominator, sine 2n pi t over t, and then the limits are 0 and t over 2. And then it's minus the integral between naught and big T over 2. And now it's du by dt times v. So taking du by dt converts the t into just 1. And we're just left with the integral of t over 2n pi sine 2n pi t over big T dt like that. So that's the first step in integrating by parts. All we need to do now is do perform the second integral. So we have, again, we can have square brackets. We've got little t, big T, over 2n pi, sine 2n pi, little t, over big T. And then for the second integral here now we've got to integrate a sine function if we integrate sine we go to minus cosine and we, that minus sign will take out the minus sign there and there'll be a new additional factor of big t over 2m pi so we get for the second integral big t over 2m pi all squared and then cos 2m pi little t over big t and then the limits are zero and t over 2 as shown there. Now we can put in the limits of the integral. So the upper limit is big T over 2. So for the first term we get um, T over 2 times big T 2n pi and then we get sine 2n pi T over 2t like that. The second term we get t over 2n pi squared cos 2n pi big T over 2 times big T. Then the put in the lower limits, well, if we think of the first term here, that's just going to give us a value equal to 0. We're going to get, well, t is 0 and also sine of and the zero is also zero. So minus zero for the first term. The second term we get cosine of zero is just one. So we get minus t over two n pi all squared as shown like that. We can carry on with the evaluation here. Now if we look at the sine function here we can see that we're going to get sine of n pi and sine of n pi is always equal to zero if n is an integer so the three remaining terms in the above formula it's just this term here and this term here that are non-zero so what we can see is we've got a common factor of t over 2n pi squared so we can write that as t 2n pi squared like that and then we've got we've got the cosine term now if we think about the cosine term here we've got cos of n pi so that gives me cos of n pi and then we've got a factor of minus one like that so finally, there's just a final little bit of cancellation. If we look at the prefactor here, we've got a factor of 4 there. 
So we're going to get another factor of 4 from the 2 squared there. There's also going to be a slight cancellation of the t. So we're going to get t over n squared pi squared, and then brackets cos n pi minus 1, like that. And this is our result now for a n. Now, as we've seen in the first example, we need to look at whether a n is non-zero for all values of n. Again, we can look at the term in the brackets there, and we can immediately see that when um, n is even, we're going to get cos of 2 pi, 4 pi, etc. is 1, so we get 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So a n is equal to 0 when n is even and when n is odd we get minus 1 minus 1 so we get minus 2 we're going to get minus 2t over n squared pi when n is odd so finally we can write so we can now write down the full result for the Fourier series. We can write that f of t is equal to, it's a naught over 2, so that gives me t over 4, minus, and then we've got a constant term, 2t over pi squared, and then we have the summation, n equals 1 to infinity, but again, in this case, n can only have an odd value, and then we get a term, 1 over n squared, that's this term just there in blue. And then we have cos 2n pi t over big t. And that's our result for the Fourier series.